Hey everyone, we're going to see how to use cross data center replication or XDCR in Couchbase. Um, so what that means is it allows us to replicate between clusters or between data centers rather than just on a per node basis. So when you, when you set up a cluster and you have multiple nodes in your cluster, uh, it's very easy to set up replication between those nodes. So in the event that one of those nodes dies, uh, you have a failover situation. Um, but in, in cross data center replication, you're now going across to different data centers. Uh, and this is good for uh, disaster recovery. It's also good for data locality. Um, so if you're using a web application in New York, it might not make a whole lot of sense to uh, use servers that are in Europe or across the country or somewhere else. Um, so it makes sense to, to replicate that data to other nearby clusters. And we're not going to be going on about how to set up uh, data locality or or any kind of load balancers that, that offer that. We're just going to be focusing on actually uh, replicating between those clusters. Um, so I am local on my machine. Um, we're going to be using Docker for this for this example. Uh, you could use AWS, Azure. You can do pretty much whatever you want to get the job done. Um, but I'm going to be using Docker to spin up several Couchbase nodes. I'm going to cluster them together, and then we're going to replicate them. Uh, so I do have Docker installed. I'm going to be using the Docker CLI. What you want to start by doing is you want to say Docker run, and we're going to run it in detached mode, and we're going to reference some ports. So we're going to say uh, 8091. Now let's start down the line, 7091, and that's our host port, and we're going to reference the container port 8091. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Couchbase 1, and we're going to use the, the Docker image Couchbase slash server. So that's the official Couchbase server image. So that created one uh, container, so one instance of Couchbase. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, this time it's going to be Couchbase 2. Um, and for our host port, uh, we can't have duplicate ports. So we're going to say 8091 this time. So we have two nodes now. Let's go ahead and add a third. So instead of 8091, let's go ahead and jump ahead. And let's say this is 10,091. And then finally, we're going to have a fourth Couchbase node, uh, and this is going to be 11,091. There are other ways to do this. You could write scripts. You can use a compose file. I just wanted to do it by hand so that way you get an idea um, on what, what exactly we're doing. We've just spun up four different Couchbase nodes with different names uh, and different port, ma port mappings to the host. Um, so with that done, uh, let's go ahead and go into our, into our web browser and start configuring this. So I do have my web browser here. I'm going to go to localhost. The first one that we set up was 80, uh, 7091. Uh, and it's going to present us with the option uh, to set up a new cluster or join an existing cluster. Um, so this is the first node of our new cluster. So let's go ahead and set it up. Let's go ahead and call this one USA SF. So this will be, uh, this cluster will represent my San Francisco data center in the United States. I'm going to give it a password. I'm going to leave that admin username. You can change it if you want, it doesn't really matter. We're going to say accept the terms. I'm going to say that I uh, accept. And I'm going to give uh, some memory allocations for each one of the Couchbase services. Uh, it's not really important what we set it at for this example. So I'm going to say 1024. Um, and I'm going to leave it as global secondary indexes and hit save and finish. So it brought us to this Couchbase uh, administrative dashboard, the first thing that you see when your wizard is done. And it was a very, very quick process. If I go to servers, you'll see that this is the only server in this particular cluster. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to add one of our other servers to the cluster. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab. I'm going to say local host 8091 this time. This time around, I'm going to say join an existing cluster. And it's going to request a cluster host name or IP address. Now you might be thinking, you know what, I'm going to enter localhost on a certain port. We're using Docker for this example, so we will have to use the Docker host name. So if we go back into the first server that we set up, let's go ahead and take this particular IP, the one that, that is recognized in the web dashboard. Um, so that way, each one of our containers will know what to do. So I copied it. I'm going to paste it over. I'm going to enter that password, and I'm going to say join with the default configuration. 
So it did go ahead and add that node. I can go back into uh, that first tab. You can see both servers are there. Uh, it really won't take effect until I do my rebalance, so that way both servers, uh, both nodes are properly sharded. Um, but they are added. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll ignore this tab here. We're going to go to a different host. We're going to say uh, localhost 10,091. This one is going to be uh, a new cluster, so we're going to have two clusters here. This cluster name is going to be USA, and this one's going to be my New York City cluster. It uh, doesn't really matter the username and password as long as you remember it. Uh, for production, it should be secure. Uh, but this is just an example. Going to accept the terms. I'm going to configure my cluster here. I'm going to use an, another 1024. So that way it doesn't use all of the RAM on my machine. And I'm going to click Save and Finish. So this is a different cluster, that's USA NYC, whereas the other tab was USA San Francisco. Um, I'm going to open up another tab here. This is going to be localhost 11091. I'm going to say I want to join an existing cluster. This time around I'm going to use my NYC server. Uh, your IPs will generally probably be the same as what I'm using, but you know what? I'm on a Mac, uh, different platforms might have a different IP range. So just, just be aware of that. I'm going to paste it in, enter that password information. I'm going to join. And now I have two different clusters. I'm going to rebalance that other one. Um, and we're going to get started with actually doing some cross data center replication. So let's go back into our first cluster, the, the San Francisco cluster. Uh, we're going to create a bucket because we have no bucket, no data. So I'm going to add a bucket. I'm going to call this one example. Uh, I'm going to give it a RAM allocation, so 256 megabytes. I'm going to say add bucket. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a document to this bucket. So I'm just going to say uh, this document key is going to be nraboy. I'm going to hit save. As far as the data goes, I'm going to say it's going to have a type property. It's going to be person. First name is going to be Nick. Last name, Raboy and I'm going to hit save. So remember, this is this is cluster one. I'm going to call it cluster one or cluster San Francisco. Uh, this bucket, uh, as soon as it refreshes, my machine's doing a lot of heavy lifting here, uh, but it does have one item in it. If I go to the other cluster, I have no buckets here. I will need to add a bucket. I need to add at least one bucket. So that way, when we do the replication, we know where does the data go? Where does it originate from? So in this case, I'm going to call this one example as well, just for consistency. I'm going to say 256. I'm going to add the bucket. I'm not going to add any data to this one. I'm going to leave this one blank. But when we do go to the first cluster, I'm going to go to XDCR. And we're going to add that second remote cluster. So we're going to add uh, USA NYC as a reference here. So we're going to say add remote cluster. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and name it USA NYC. For the IP or host name, let's go ahead and make sure we get a correct IP and host name. So you can choose either of these uh, IP addresses. Remember, it's a peer-to-peer -peer database. There is no master slave, so any of these will work. Uh, let's go ahead and copy it. We'll go back here. We'll add it. We'll enter the uh, username and password for the remote cluster, and we'll save it. So it is now a referenced item in this list, but that doesn't mean that we are currently replicating. Um, so if I go here, if I go back, I go to my buckets, refresh even, there's still no items because it, it hasn't replicated yet. So what we want to do is go back to cluster one, so cluster San Francisco, and let's go ahead and set up a replication to happen. So we're going to say add replication. Uh, this is our origin bu bucket, so the, the bucket on USA San Francisco. We're going to replicate to NYC, and the remote bucket on NYC is also named example. Uh, if you wanted to, you can you can do advanced options. You can do some filtering. We're going to leave it as the default here. We're going to save it. And now replication is going to consistently uh, replicate to the NYC instance. So if I go to this other tab, um, our data should appear. So I refreshed. The data is now in the NYC cluster. Now, if I go ahead and I make an edit to this document, I'll say uh, I change it. It's going to be Nicholas. I'm going to save it, 
look at my buckets here look at look at my data this is still nyc it shows up perfectly on nyc let's see if it happened on uh the new uh the san francisco bucket go to san francisco it still says nick and that's because it's a one-way replication so if we want a two-way replication uh, which we probably do in this scenario we go to our nyc um, cluster here we go to xdcr we add a remote cluster let's go ahead and call this one usa sf we're going to get the ip address of one of our sf servers copy it paste it in uh, add the connection information the username and password hit save and then let's go ahead and add a replication so origin being nyc example bucket we're going to replicate to the remote cluster being sf and on sf we all are also working with an example bucket so we're going to hit save so this replication uh, is now two-way so if i go back to the san francisco cluster and i go to buckets and let's look at that information it now says nicholas because it has replicated uh, in both directions so let's go ahead and add another piece of data here on the nyc bucket just just for sanity's sake uh, let's go ahead and add a document this one is going to be m reboy and for this data we're going to say type person first name maria last name reboy and we're going to save it and if we look at our at our san francisco instance not our nyc uh that should be good now yeah so i've refreshed it it did transfer over um, so it was actually very easy to do cross data center replication we could add many more clusters so maybe we have a europe cluster or an asia we can add as many as we want um, and we can continue to do replication between those clusters or data centers uh, in addition to replication between nodes in each one of the clusters um, so in case there's any kind of failover um, and then we have the cross data center or xdcr for any kind of disaster recovery and like i said it's it's also good for data locality as well